Hello guys, this is Jordana from Jordana Blasco Drima and we are here another week to listen to uh, another one of my books. This was actually the very first one that I wrote and it's called The Legend of the River That Flows. It is divided in three smaller books which are um, The River That Flows, Eve and Dawn. And today I'm not going to read the first three chapters because it take, it's a bit slow starting the book. I'm going to read um, a couple of chapters from the very last book, Dawn. Um, and it's, I, I find it very interesting, that bit. And this will be the last of the books I have uh, until the next one. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and here it comes. The Legend of the River That Flows. The chamber was dark, but their accustomed eyes had no problem perceiving all that was around them. It was skillfully carved in a mix of stone and dark glass walls with unusual markings on them. The ceilings were high and transparent. The air was warm and a bit humid. Small balls of a dull blue colour started going off as they looked around. Majek was going to step forward when Eve signalled him not to with her hand. She looked around and focused her attention on a small dark stone recess to their left. The wall seemed to be moving like waves on the sea in a slow and mesmerising dance, then twisting and stretching the wall towards them. The malleable stones were now taking some sort of shape and a small being finally appeared before them. His large purple eyes regarded them excitedly. Dragging his long, oversized ochre tunic, he moved closer to them. Greetings, Eve, he said, putting his hands together and playing with his long fingers his lips falling to his elbows and showing his skinny arms. His skin had the same texture and colour as a stone. I am one of the keepers. He looked at my Jack and then back at Eve. I presume you will be perusing the chambers for some time, Alan? He asked cheerfully. You presume well, keeper, replied Eve. Majek looked at her, confused. The keeper intervened. I'm afraid that on this occasion I will be your host, Golden One. Eve then looked at Majek and said, Our Mother Moon is watching. The universe is speaking. And we must now listen to its words. I have to follow this path and you have to follow yours. We will meet here again soon, and remember, this is the mountain. Do not think she's done with you. Her grave aspect turned to a cheeky half-smile, and she winked at her dad. She started to walk in the opposite direction. Majek was surprised, but no longer troubled, for his mind had also gone through a transformation the same as his own body. His insecurities had vanished as quickly as the wind sweeps the leaves from the ground. The universe was talking and he already knew how to listen. He let go. Shall we proceed to this side of the corridor? The keeper asked politely while pointing to the left. Majek nodded and he followed him in silence, the tiptoe of his little feet and the dragging of his tunic wrapping them in a hypnotic tune. His eyes fixated on the tunic. It was mesmerizing. They walked for 15 long minutes along the corridor of the mountain, always in a straight line, always seeing what seemed to be an unchanging scene. The keeper was certainly a calm and collected being, unusually cheerful and full of energy, 
At times it seemed as if he was going to start hopping. Majek smiled to himself. He had not made a joke in years. It felt good inside. They stopped at one of the gla black glass panels, which he assumed were some sort of gates or doors. We have arrived, announced the keeper. Majek looked at him inquiringly and said, I cannot walk through walls. Naturally, answered the small man. He stood next to Majek and stretched his fragile, bony hand towards him. Please allow me, said the keeper, taking his hand. The grip of the small man was deceptively strong and he pulled him firmly towards the wall. Majek closed his eyes and felt coldness at first, then sensed his body wobbling as they walked through it. When the keeper let go of his hand, Majek looked around and gasped. He walked backwards and touched the solid wall in a panic, starting to sweat heavily. His heart was pounding relentlessly in his chest. Before him, strong rays of the sun were turning painfully slowly into a sunset. Fear not, said the keeper, staring at him with his large purple eyes. For this landscape is as real as you want it to be. Majek realized that, although he was a special being, he was not supernatural. He closed his eyes tightly. This is not real. We are inside a mountain. It was almost done when we arrived. This is not real. This is a test. He repeated this to himself in a low voice until his heartbeat relaxed and he could open his eyes again. Majek took a deep breath and straightened himself up. The keeper was standing, waiting. He said, Please, to make yourself comfortable and I will ensure that you are catered for. for. He then disappeared through some bushes. Majek walked slowly towards an inviting leafy area nearby, where he sat down and enjoyed the view. The sun set in, the bright colours. All the feelings he thought he would never feel again. He felt tired. In fact, he felt exhausted. Exhausted from years of pain, doubt, remorse and fighting to be who he was not. His mind settling, he felt relief and lightness. He closed his eyes softly, and in that reality, night fell. If walked for a few meters before looking back and watching Majek walk away with the keeper, she thought about how he had achieved such a great change within and how much more he was going to learn about himself. At that instant, the stone wall in front of her started waving and stretching again and, within seconds, another keeper, exactly the same as the first, was standing in the corridor. Greetings, Eve, he said happily. I am one of the keepers. How can I be of assistance? I'm looking for opposites, Eve replied, not even knowing why she was saying that. What an interesting and complex search, for opposites are different degrees of the same nature, stated the keeper. He then lifted his long, skinny index finger and tapped his tiny mouth a few times, as if thinking. Then... He smiled as far as his small mouth would allow and pointed to the right. Please, follow me, he said politely. As they started walking, the corridor looked never-ending. The keeper's long tunic dragged on the floor and the tiptoeing of his little feet was enchanting. Eve stopped abruptly. Her grey eyes shone in anger. 
Do not forget who I am, Keeper, she told him. You are not to play any mind games with me. The Keeper stopped and turned around. Certainly, my most sincere apologies, Moonchild. The man rose from the floor, his feet no longer touching the ground, and his tunic no longer being dragged along. As they started moving again, the corridor disappeared, and a long set of smooth black stairs appeared before them. They proceeded up the stairs, continuing their walk for some time through other corridors and other sets of stairs, until they stopped in front of a black glass panel. We have arrived! the keeper announced. He then went on to touch the panel, which became wavy. He focused his eyes on Eve. Please, remember that the mountain will only allow you to take that which you search for, nothing else. Understood, Eve replied. You may enter now, chosen one, he said, and vanished into thin air. Eve walked through the waves and found herself in a round, vaulted, luminous white room. It hurt her eyes badly. She had to squint, but even then it was very painful. She could only make out the walls of a very bright but enclosed room. She thought it was strange, but then an idea came into her head. This room was almost like darkness for a human. You could not see anything in the dark until your eyes got accustomed to it, and then you could start recognizing shapes. But this time it was the opposite, for she could see in the dark as in, as if in the daytime. Opposite. So... If a human had to open his eyes and wait until he could see, then she had to do the opposite. The bright light hurt her eyes, so in order to see, she had to close her eyes. And when she did, she could see the entire room perfectly in a dimmed blue light, as if looking through a blue lens. She started walking around the room. There was absolutely nothing in there. Nothing she could see. Nothing through the walls. Nothing around her. She sat down on the floor in the center of the room. She looked up, her eyes still closed, and noticed geometrical designs carved on the ceiling. This is not the floor. She stood up. It is the ceiling. At that moment, the room turned upside down with a screeching noise and Eve rolled with it until she was flat on the floor. Instinctively, she opened her eyes. The light did not hurt her any more as it was pointing upwards now and she could see the blurry shape of different objects inside the walls lined up in rows and columns. A shy smile appeared on her face. As she was going to stand up again, Eve accidentally kicked her blue moon necklace, which had fallen from her pocket after the tumble, and it slid along to the middle of the floor. At once, the necklace started leaking its blue colour. It began to feel the carved lines on the ground, and these, at the same time, started gleaming. A beam of blue light shot from one of the corners into the opposite wall and, with a bang, made a hole in it, and she saw an object falling to the ground immediately after. Eve went to check what the object was and found a thick collar with a large gold pendant of the sun disk, beautifully worked and gracefully styled. She had no doubts. She had what she was meant to find. There and then, she grew up into a young woman. Her onyx skin and the unusual look in her grey eyes gave her 
fearsome poise. She picked up her moon necklace from the floor and walked out. Well, this is it. Thank you so much for listening to these three chapters of the last book, Dawn, which is inside the legend of the river that flows. If you want to know how the story started and how it developed, uh, I will put the links on the description area. And uh, if you're interested, you can go into it and check it out. Um, and as usual, I hope you enjoyed those, those short chapters. And we'll end up the video with a funny joke, as usual, but this time will not be a dear joke. Um, this one is a number joke. So this time uh, we have this question. Why nobody likes seven? If you don't know the answer, as usual, don't Google it. Uh, have a guess, put it in the comments. And if you know the answer, put it in the comments too. Uh, the question is again, why nobody likes number seven? Anyway, thank you guys. I don't have any more books uh, to read uh, at the moment. That's all what I have, four books. I will be writing my fifth one soon. If you have any suggestions on what to change on the videos or what you would like to see, please feel free to comment or and also follow us on Facebook if you want to. Um, subscribe, like, etc, etc, etc. All the things that you already know what to do, how to do them. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for your attention. Um, and we'll see you soon, hopefully, and be a dreamer. Always, always, always dream big. Bye!